Are you waking up at 3 a.m. just staring at the ceiling, wondering why you're up before your alarm and praying for sleep to return? If so, this video may be just for you. Hi ladies, I'm Dr. Val, an integrative sleep medicine physician and women's sleep expert. And today I'll be your guide to navigating those 3 a.m. wake ups. Let's dive into six reasons why some of us may be finding ourselves awake in the middle of the night. So grab your favorite cozy blanket and let's get started. The number one thing to wonder is, well, is this a normal awakening or could it be an underlying medical issue? There's one reason that could explain it that's a normal event is actually something called your sleep pressure. We call it our homeostatic sleep drive. All this means is the longer you're awake, the sleepier you are. So at the end of the day, you're so tired, you've been up for so long, you're so sleepy. And when you go to sleep, guess what? You're relieving yourself of that pressure. And the longer you sleep, the less sleepy you are. So if you're going to bed at 10 and waking up at three, guess what? You've met the minimum amount of sleep time, which is about five hours. The trouble with this is sometimes if you don't know what's happening is that you start to judge yourself and then you get anxious and you feel really distressed. And these feelings of anxiety and distress can cycle to the point where you're so worried about your ability to fall asleep, you in fact don't fall back asleep. The second normal reason why someone can have a hard time falling back to sleep at night is something that has to do with our sleep stages, also our sleep architecture. So we have four stages of sleep, one, two, three, and then stage REM sleep. And then we cycle through these four stages about 90 to 110 minutes a night. And it's normal to wake up or even have a brief awakening after one cycle. Typically, you can fall back asleep right away. Um, but the same thing, just with your sleep pressure, if you're waking up and you're really distressed and you don't know why, it can also keep you from falling back asleep. A third reason why women have a hard time staying asleep and have those pesky nighttime awakenings is something called perimenopause. And so what is perimenopause? I'm sure you've heard of this before. And if not, it's just when you start to have symptoms of menopause, but you're still having your periods. The average age of perimenopause is actually 47 years old and you start to have shifts in estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen and progesterone actually can help support our sleep. And when things like estrogen drop, you can have hot flashes. But you may not necessarily be waking up drenched and needing to change your clothes. Sometimes it could be on a subconscious or unconscious level where your body temperature is slowly rising and that can make you Along with perimenopause and menopause are things like insomnia and anxiety, which can also impact our ability to stay asleep. Next on our list of things that disrupt your sleep is something sneaky and something we probably know never ever have. It's called stress. So stress that's unchecked can lead to something called ruminating thoughts, where we tend to just overthink and think and think and think and think and think. And think. Um, for women, right, balancing careers, family life, and even our personal life can really be so challenging. And sometimes our minds just get the best of us and they tend to be on overdrive and especially at night because it's dark, it's quiet and cool. And some of those unwelcome awakenings can really be from the brain just not being able to relax. Another factor that can lead to disrupted sleep in the middle of the night is something that I see on a regular basis in my medical practice and that's obstructive sleep apnea. People who snore, gasp, or stop breathing because the muscles of their upper airway are relaxing at night. If you think you have that, go get a sleep test. You can do it in the comfort of your own home. And actually, as women go through perimenopause and menopause, rates of obstructive sleep apnea double to triple. And lastly, let's not forget musculoskeletal issues. Unfortunately, as we grow older, sometimes we do have some aches and pains in our joints. And if you're on your side too long, you may need to turn to the other side. And sometimes you don't even know that. And it's just shifting of your body at night actually wakes you up. But let me know in the comments below if you have one or more of these factors and what you've done to help improve it if you have. Do your best not to worry about it because a lot of us go through this. But I do encourage you to find a healthcare professional that you like and trust to help you along your sleep journey. If you found this video helpful, please like and share it with someone who could benefit from it. Sleep well, ladies. Until next time.